this is W0EA uh, TJ and uh, I'm going to show you how to set up DSP radio by DL2 SDR uh, for your Mac uh, using the K uh, KX3's IQ audio output. Um, this is not uh, trivial. It took me a while to figure out, but uh, as you see, it is working. Um, so, let me walk you through it here. Um, obviously, you need the proper cable to interface with your uh, computer. I'm using an iMac, and uh, it has a stereo line in jack, so I didn't have to do any fancy external sound cards or anything like that. Um, I did have a little interface board that I made that had some uh, audio level uh, transformers, but uh, I found that they actually made this uh, particular function not work at all. So uh, I took it out of line and everything works very, very well. Um, okay, so uh, make sure you've got the uh, IQ output enabled on your KX3. Yeah, and use the manual to figure out how to do that. And then uh, once you've got DSP radio installed, and I'll uh, be able to show you where that is um, in a minute, uh, what you need to do is, uh, first thing you need to do is launch MIDI setup. Uh, and you want to show... You want to show the audio window. This will show all your audio devices. And in order to run the IQ in DSP radio, you need to create an aggregate device. To do that, you hit the plus symbol, hit create aggregate device, and then it gives you a window like this. Um, it gives you uh, the option for built-in input, output, microphone, and any other audio uh, or uh, DSP sound cards you might have. These, this is, so ignore those. You probably don't have those. Um, and then click your the two you want to use, and you can set your sample rate up to 96,000 hertz. And um, I don't like to have too much on the screen because I'm mostly a CW op, and if I have 96k wide um, on my uh, band scope the signals are so thin that they're hard to land on with the tuning knob so uh, you want to make sure your clock source is set to built-in input and then check use use and uh, you're good to go there so you can just go ahead and close out of this stuff then go back to DSP radio and then go to show hide configuration and this is where things start to get exciting um, if you do not already have a configuration there or if you do it doesn't matter um, uh, you can make a new one and uh, just by hitting add configuration at the bottom here it doesn't need to have a name or anything um, you'll use the input to figure out what your I and Q inputs are and it just gives you zero or one um, make sure you, know, you may have to swap these to get the uh, uh, channels correct so that when you tune the uh, spectrum goes the right direction. Um, for this case, since we're just using it as a band scope, the I output I and Q uh, I don't really care about as sign with side tone, and we do not want the AGC on. Um, the input gain, you may have to adjust to get a level that is suitable in the uh, scope. And uh, what you can do is, uh, once you get this uh, in here, hit active, and then it'll turn it on. So you'll be able to monitor what you change in this configuration window on the band scope. Um, and you may have to finet, uh, mess with the input gain and the S meter gain, and or not S meter, but the uh, input gain and the spectrum gain to get uh, signals that you want to see in the window there. So once you have that and you've got your uh, band scope is appearing, close that, and then that's it basically. Um, DSP Radio does not offer a lot of options for uh, 
you know the way you want to display this uh, you cannot change the width of the display um, without changing the uh, uh, rate capture rate on the sound card um, you can't change the colors really and uh, so it's very limited but it does give you a band scope and it runs natively on a Mac so <laughs> that's a lot to ask for um, you can do a normal spectrum which just gives you this gray against black high is white against black basically um, you can do a waterfall uh, I don't really care for the waterfall it would be nice if we could do both like you can on the P3 and uh, power SDR and that kind of stuff or you can have that off altogether but that doesn't really make any sense so I just keep it on high I think that's the best looking one um, change your mode to IQ I guess uh, as far as I can tell none of these really matter because we're not demodulating anything inside of DSP radio we're just using it for the band scope um, this bandwidth uh, only adjusts the bandwidth of the received signals um, and we don't really care about that either because like I said we're just using it as a band scope um, you want your volume as low as possible because we don't want to receive the signal on the computer we want to receive them on the K3, KX3 uh, again so that's that's pretty much it um, and you can tune around as you see we can turn up the volume here on the KX3 as you can see we're you can adjust where this uh, frequency is and uh, all I did was make it so that uh, that was my indicator of when I was tuned onto the signal uh, so you can make it uh, you know wherever you want and uh, yeah it seems to work pretty good um, one uh, one thing that's kind of interesting is uh, Unlike the P3, when you transmit, uh, the IQ does not drop out or hold or anything. So, for instance, this is transmitting, and uh, so you have some IQ going out, uh, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> I haven't quite uh, figured that out yet. Um, I'm sure there's there's you know some things we can do to make this. Uh, play with it some more but hey this is a you know brief description of how to get it running so you can uh, have some kind of native program on a Mac uh, I'll put a link for DSP radio down in the notes section and uh, if you have any questions uh, I will try to help you get it set up this is W0A73